In this video, we're going to be looking at menu. Menu is, it's kind of almost like a button. It feels like a button. You click on it and then you have stuff up here and you could divide that up, group that info together. This is one of those ones you just kind of have to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the docs on that. And then I think we have about two or three examples. So let's get to seeing what this is all about. It says menu. It says an accessible drop down menu for the common drop down menu design pattern. Menu, menu uses roving tab index for focus management. So we can see that there's eight exports or for your case imports coming on in here. Menu, menu button, list, uh, item, item option, group, option group, icon, command, divider. It sounds like a lot's going on here, but if you've followed this series at all, it's gonna be okay. And so here we go. This is our menu. Looks like a button, doesn't it? And let's click this and we see a bunch of this stuff come down right here. Oh, this isn't as bad as we thought it was. So we have the menu wrapping everything. We have the menu button, which is as a button, right? And then we have this Chevron icon pointing down here. And then we have actions. So this menu button inside of the menu component is rendering this out. And then when we click it, voila, we see a drop down list with all this cool stuff right here. Download, create copy, mark as draft, you know, subscribe to my channel, all that other good stuff. And then this is an example of how to access internal state. To access the internal state of the menu, use a function as children, commonly known as a render prop, and you'll get access to the internal state is open and method on close here. And so I don't think I've dove too much into this right here, but this is very, very similar to what we're seeing here before. And I don't know. I didn't really play this example a whole lot. I don't know when or why, or, you know, maybe in a case I just haven't need to get the internal state, you know, is open or the method on close, but this up here was just good enough for me. And then you could customize things as you've been able to before. It says the default menu button can be styled using the usual styled system props, but it starts off plainly styled. We've seen that at the top. It's that boring gray. You could add the, the Chevron icon right there. Using the as prop of the menu button, you could render a custom component instead of the default menu button. For instance, you could use chakras button component or a custom component of your own. And it says right here, custom components must take a ref prop, which is assigned to the React component that triggers the menu opening. This is so that the menu list can pop over. Oh, the menu list could pop over and be positioned correctly. Without this, the menu list will render in an undefined position. So just remember that you have to use a ref prop when you're using a, um, a custom component and you should be fine. And then we have letter navigation here. When focus is on the menu button or within the menu list and you type a letter key, a search begins. Focus will move from the first menu item that starts that letter with the letter you typed. Let me see that again. Focus will move to the first menu item that starts with the letter you typed. So it says here, open the menu, try and type any letter, say S and see the focus move. So I'm gonna type S and it goes to save file. Let's go to O and it goes to open. Well, that's pretty darn cool. So how is it doing it in here? So we're looking down, we see menu right here. We have the menu button. We have, you know, the styling, the hover, the expand, the shadow, all this other stuff. So this is really just affecting the button right here. And then we have the menu list in here. We have the divider, as we could see this right here. So this is pretty interesting right here, but what's cool is that there's this focus right here. And so it says when focus is on the button or within the menu list, uh, a search begins. So just because we have this focus coming on right here, this is an interesting way that they enable you to kind of quickly search and move through stuff here. Now, is this kind of gimmicky? I wouldn't say it's gimmicky, but... You know, if you're on your phone, you're not going to be 
like bringing up your keyboard to type while having this up, right? This is more of something you'd use on a desktop, but it is a cool feature that they have included in the library. And they have another example. We'll skip over that. And so we have this adding icons and commands. It says you can add an icon to each menu item by passing the icon prop. To add uh, a command or hotkey to many items, you could use the command prop. So we have this right here, this icon, which is the hamburger right here. This is an icon button. So keep in mind that they're switching this here as well. And then they're also using the icon button. So you kind of want to keep track of these two here. And this opens as it does before. But then we also have the command here. Command new tab, command open window, close tab, open file. And so to reread this again up here, it says to add a command to menu items, you can use the command prop. So let's, uh, let's just open this here and then let's do a new tab. So actually, you know what? I am on a PC right now, so I do not remember what the equivalent is, but Test these out and let me know how these things go because that's uh, this kind of interesting feature of this. And then we could lazily mount a menu item and we have the menu here and it says is lazy. So what is it doing? It says by default, the menu component renders all children of menu list to the DOM, meaning that invisible menu items are still rendered, but hidden by styles. So you kind of want to, if you're testing certain things, appearing or or whatever you just want to be aware that the is lazy you know is is in play and so if you want to defer rendering of each child of the menu list until that menu is open you can use the is lazy prop this is useful if your menu needs to be extra performant and some people in big cities hey i have like you know 16g super ultra networks the internet already knows what i want that's super cool but not everyone has that. Sometimes you live in rural areas and your internet is spotty or you're on a train or walking through a building. So you kind of need to think about uh, do you what are you doing that that you may need to make your you know window more performant and maybe you want to make it as lazy. And so we have rendering a menu in a portal here. And so it says to render menus in a portal, import the portal component and wrap the menu list within the portal here. So it's really just everything we've seen before here, but you're just wrapping the menu list inside of the portal. And if you want to render things out that way, uh, you know, feel free to. It looks to run about the same here, but if you're a big fan of th these guys, go for it. And then we have a menu group. It says to group related menu items. I think how the S is kind of big at the end there. Use the menu group component and pass a title for the group name. So let's just see how this visually looks. And so we have profile up here. We have my account payments and then we have help docs and FAQ. We could see that even with or without the divider, we kind of have like a header for each of these sections here. And so we have one group up here that says profile and one that says help. Menu group one or menu group one and this one is two. And we can see that denoted by profile and then help above, which are, you know, what these are rendering out. And then you have your menu items inside of there. Now this is getting a bit more thick with examples, but we have this menu options group. You could compose a menu for table headers to help with sorting and filtering options use the menu option group and menu items option component. So what does this look like? Okay, this is interesting here. So what we have is a menu button. We've already seen this before. This is function as a button. This this thing right here. We have this close on select. So this means that I'm able to come in here and select these things and it's not closing for me. So that's what this is performing. The menu list has a minimum width, that's fine. We don't really need to you know, look into this too much. And we do have this default value and this is ascending right here. And this is gonna be you know, A first because, um, well, 
the default value is going to be ascending, which is this right here. If I want to switch this to, you know, DESC, descending would be the default value when I open it up. And this is also a radio button, so you only have an option of one thing to click on at a time. And then down here, this is a type of checkbox. So I could come in here and check everything or check nothing inside of here. And then we have a bunch more on accessibility, the ARIA roles. Please read over these, check over them. And we have the props as we do at the end of every single section here. There's a lot of props, a lot of things we could continue to do, but I just want to code, so let's get to coding. So let's go ahead and make a very simple menu. And then in the next you know, few examples, we're going to expand on all the neat and cool things you could do with the menu. And the last one we're going to do for the example is going to show you how to handle clicks and do some cool stuff. So let's just make a very simple version of a menu. So we have this menu here, and it looks kind of funny because we have this menu, but it really looks like a button, so what is this? So as we click this menu button right here, as button, which, you know, when you click over it, you can see this finger here. We can see that it says, say hi to Bernie, order some pizza, and take a nap. Now, one of the interesting things that we could do here is we could add this in. So now we have this. We could click here, but we could also click on this chevron, and it'll indicate to the user, hey, when you click this, something's going to appear, which in this case is going to be a menu. Another thing we could do here at the top of the menu is type out is lazy. And what does that do? It means that the contents, as in like the item, the list, are not going to be renderable. You could find them, anything like that. Keep in mind for testing, too. This is important. These aren't really going to come to the page until you click this button. So it's it's just going to load it less. So if you have a gigantic list, a lot of complex stuff going on, you may not want it to load because it may slow down the user experience. But on small items like this, I would say that is super negligible. So this is the intro to uh, menus and the menu list and the menu items. And the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to check out how to expand on this and make menu groups and expand the options and do just some more cool stuff with this concept. See you in a moment. So now that we're back here, let's go and let's take this uh, menu list right here and let's wrap it in a menu group. And I'm gonna show you kind of what that does to all the items on the inside. So I just copy and pasted what I had above down below here to show this. And so we could have the menu group and the title and the title is going to be this action to take. And we could have this right here. And so we have say hi to Bernie, order some pizza, take a nap. And we have this menu divider, which is this nice line here that gives you the visual indication that yes, in fact, there is something different going on. You know, these are different kind of uh, groupings, if you will. And so that's kind of interesting, I think, to me. And then on top of that as well, you can also do things like um, have options, things you could select in the menu. But if you hold on just a minute, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next section. So now that we're back, let's take this list or this menu list and kind of move it to the next status here. And so we have say hi to Bernie, order some pizza and take a nap. Let's just cut out this last menu group here. 
because I don't want the example to get, you know, too wild and crazy. And we're going to change some of these to a menu option group, and we're going to have menu item options. And just give me one moment. I'm going to rearrange this, and then we're going to talk about it. All right, so now that we see this right here, we have this radio button where it says radio, and we see this check mark next to what we selected. But as we click it, it selects, but it closes, and that, that's kind of unfortunate. So how do we handle that? We could come up here to menu, and we could type this. To make sure everything's loaded correctly. Now as we come in, we could say hi to Bernie, order some pizza, or take a nap. And we could select these, which is pretty neat. And that's not the only thing we could do as well. We could actually come on in here, and we could switch this out from a radio to a checkbox. As we can see, it's not working right here. And why is that? It's because... I capitalize thing, things awkwardly. So the checkbox looks very similar to the radio button, or the, I would say radio button, but the radio effect where you could just choose one. And with the checkbox, you could have a list of things that you, you know, could check off on here, which I think is pretty interesting. Visually, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to it. I guess it's a... Uh, Okay, using these check marks here for either a checkbox or a radio, you know, feature if you just want them to select one thing. But once again, it's all up to you, your design team, and how you're trying to curate your user's experience. So in our last example here, what we're going to do in just a moment is hook all this up to a state and handle all the fun clicking. So yeah, see you in just a moment. So we're back here now. Let's go ahead and take this and change it back to radio, reset this, and let's do something, let's set this so when we click on something, we update the state so we know what the user clicked. So let's go ahead and get our state set up. So right now we have this text value right here. We've already gone over text and I think we could understand what it means. And right now there's no value in there because our state is nothing right now. There's nothing in there. And so what I'm gonna do is when I click on this right here, sub for Bernie, it's gonna update the state and then it's gonna show what I selected. So as I click here, we see it says Bernie. If I click anywhere else, it doesn't do anything. As I reload, it's obviously zeroed out. So this could be one of the ways that you can handle the incoming data that is moving through you know, your list and how to capture it and whatnot. So I hope you like this example. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you dig what I'm doing, and I'll see you all in the next video.